In this video, we're going to have a quiz about joins. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of IDoData.com. So you can see in the code on the screen that we've created three tables, shops, customers, and then a table linking the two, purchases. So we also have got values for these tables, and I've selected everything from them. You can also see this replicated on the right hand side. So table shops is linked to table purchases. Table purchases is linked to table customers. So this quiz is designed for people who are just starting their SQL journey. So you know about the select and the from clause, you know about joins, and you want to test your knowledge. Now, if you don't know about the various type of joins, then stop this video here. You will see a link above to my video about joins. You should watch that video first and then come back to this one. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions and you should pause the video and have a think about the answer. You can also see on the screen the schema and also all of the values. So question number one, what joins table shops to table purchases? What is the column? What is the field? What joins them together? So pause the video and have a think about the answer. So the answer is shop ID. Shop ID is the same field in both table shops and table purchases. Second question, what is the column, the field that joins table purchases and table customers? So pause the video, have a look. And the answer is customer ID. That's the same in both and they have got compatible data. So let's create a select statement which joins table shops and table purchases. So I can go select star from table shops, join table purchases. What's the next word? Have a think about it. Well, if you said an alias, yes, you could put in aliases and it's usually quite good to alias the tables into say a single or two letters, but that's not the word I was looking for. Have another think. And the answer is on. So on joins these two together and says, what is the common field or fields? So in this case, it is shop ID and we'll say that they are joined together like that. If I run this select statement, what will I get? How many columns? How many rows? The answer is because it is select star, I will get all of the columns in the two tables. Table shop has got two columns, table purchase three. So therefore I will have five columns. So it doesn't matter that shop ID is contained in both table shops and table purchases. I will get two shop ID columns. Now, how many rows did you guess? One, two, three, or zero? And the answer is one. So we'll have a think about that. What sort of join is it? creating. What's the full name of this join? Now, because it doesn't say what type of join, then one is assumed and that is the inner join. Why would this inner join give me one row instead of two or three? And the answer is that's what inner joins do. Inner joins give me what is common to both of them. So let's have a think about this. So we have got shops one and two in one table and shops one and three in another. So what is common? One. So one can go in the middle here. So another way of saying this is that one is in both circles, both tables, two is in one, 
reason another. So an inner join will give me just number one. So that is why we only have one row. Next question. Suppose I wanted in this join both table shops ID one and two. Which join should I use? And the answer is a left join, also known as a left outer join. So generally you would see left join. If I execute this, then you can see that we've got shop IDs one and two and whichever customers have made purchases in those. Now, nobody has made a purchase in shop ID two. So that is why this is showing no's empty. So let's have a look at the left join. So we have got one, two and three. A left join gives us everything from the first table and where it matches in the second table. So that is why we have got one and two, but not three. Now, suppose I wanted shop ID one and three instead. I only want to make minimal changes to this query. What do I do? The answer is I change the left join to a right join. Now I could change this query so that table purchases is at the first table and then got table shops as the second, and then it would be a left join. But if I've got an existing query which works and I just want the different results, then the easiest way is just to change the join. So you don't see right joins as often, but it's very useful if you've got an existing query that works and you just need to make this one alteration. So here you can see that we have got all of the customer IDs who have made purchases and the shops that they've made purchases in. There is no shop number three, so therefore we have got no's. So to put it in terms of our Venn diagram, here we have shops one, two, and three, and the right outer join gives us one and three, but not shop two because there are no purchases made in that shop. Here's the next question. I want to see shop IDs one, two, and three. What sort of join should I use? And the answer is a full join. A full join gives me all of the tables, regardless of whether there are any matches. So you can see that we have got no purchases for shop ID two, and we haven't got a shop for shop ID three. So going back to our Venn diagram again, so this is shops one, two, and three. And here we have the entirety of these shops in the full join or the full outer join. What join doesn't choose this on word? And the answer is a cross join. So a cross join, you notice that we've got this squiggly underline. And what happens with a cross join is it takes each row and evaluates it against each row in the table purchases. So how many rows will this cross join give us? The answer is four, two multiplied by two. So there is our four rows. So here is our Venn diagram. So you can see the circles are now completely separate. And so we don't have one in the middle. We have one against one, one against three, two against one, two against three. So you would often use a where clause to say, okay, does this actually make sense? Do I really want one against three? And this can be quite useful when you don't want equality joins is one equal to one, but where you want to say, is this less than another one, for instance? So this is the end of this first quiz. So in this quiz, we had a look at the various types of joins and the word on and the connection between them. In the quiz next week, we'll be looking at table purchases and table customers. We'll be looking at missing data and we'll be looking at how we can create a select query joining all three tables together. Well, I hope that this was useful for you. 
If it was, then why not join me in one of my SQL courses? So it depends how much time you have got as to which course you should do. So if you've got an hour, then why not join me in my SQL Server Essentials in an hour, where we have a look at all of the six principal clauses in the SELECT statement, together with connecting two tables together. If you've got more time, then please join me in my ITS201. This IT specialist certification gives you all the fundamentals knowledge that you'll need for SQL Server. So not only these six clauses, but inserting, updating and deleting data, backups and restore data, joining two tables together and creating views, procedures and more. And if you've got a lot of time and really want to get in depth, then please join me in my querying Microsoft SQL Server with TSQL course, where we get into much more depth and into more topics. So thank you very much for joining me on this video. If you liked it, then please click the like button and why not subscribe and click that bell. That way you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you very much for watching this and keep learning.